first of all, let's have a look at some definitions for that pure AC signal, the type you get on a mains grid. So I'm going to use a little, uh, a simple little approach here. We're going to use analytical uh, uh, cosine waves. So I've got a voltage, UT, which is simply equal to U cos omega T. And here, my capital U, my capital I, I'm using a, a conventional mathematical definition that these are the amplitudes of those. So my current now is the amplitude capital I times cos omega T plus phi. So it's the same frequency as my voltage, but it's got an arbitrary phase angle phi. Now let's see, when that angle phi is zero, so the two are in phase, if I multiply voltage and current together, then I end up with the instantaneous power. And we can see that that's the little green wave here. Now, if we look at it, we notice that the green wave is a sinusoidal wave, and it has a frequency twice that of the underlying voltage and current, twice the frequency. We can also see that the power is always positive. That's because a negative times a negative is equal to a positive. And if we measure the area under that, that's energy, remember, the integral of power is energy. And we can see that's a positive energy and that's all gone. It's all consumed to drive a resistive load. Now, if the current was offset by 90 degrees now, phi 90 degrees, we notice now it changes. So we've still got the same frequency of power and the same amplitude, but we notice now that the mean is at zero. So there's equal amounts of negative energy, if you like, as positive energy. So if we look at the energy, it now equates to zero. So no energy is being consumed by the load. We call that a reactive load. If you want to think of the old water pipe analogy for electricity, in the first instance, our water is actually going along the pipe and doing valuable work. In our second analogy, if you like, it's going backwards and forwards. It's not moving anywhere, it's not doing work, but it is generating heat and losses. And that's what we want to take account of. Of course, real life, we don't get pure zero or 90 degrees, we get some intermediate angle. And so what we find is we've still got the same amplitude and frequency here, but now we've got some that's positive and some that's negative. And so we've got some, some active and reactive load in there. Let's put some high school maths to this just to, to show where it all comes from. So remember, instantaneous power is the voltage times the current. And if they're in phase, we've got U cos omega T and I cos omega T. We can simplify that and expand it and we get this expression here. So there's our cos 2 omega t, that's the frequency that's twice the input, remember. This 1 plus, that's the bit that makes all of this power positive. And this ui over 2, that's the amplitude or the apparent power. Now if we offset this by 90 degrees, that current now becomes a sine wave. And if we simplify this equation, we get this one. So again, we've got the same apparent power, same amplitude, look, ui over 2. We've got the same frequency, the 2 omega t, but now we've got a zero mean. So there's equal positive and equal negative. And of course, the general case now where we've got an, an arbitrary angle phi, again, if we simplify this equation, you'll notice we've got the same apparent power, ui over 2, same frequency of 2 omega t, but this time our mean offset is ui over 2 cos phi. Now this parameter cos phi is what's called the power factor. So when phi is zero, cos phi becomes one, and that's when we have a wholly resistive load. If phi is 90 degrees, then the cos phi becomes zero, so it's a wholly reactive load. And the power factor can be anything between plus one and minus one, and depending on its value tells us the amount of active and reactive components in there. Let's clear the board a bit and let's take this last equation and do a little bit more expansion. So if I now take this expression and expand it, what we actually find is it turns out that the total instantaneous power is the weighted sum of an active component plus the reactive component. And the weighting all depends on these two amplitudes here. And this is what I'm going to define as being our standard, if you like, our definition. So the amplitude of the active power is ui over 2 cos phi. The reactive power is ui over 2 
sine phi. And if we want the apparent power, ui over two, we can take the sum of the squares of those. And if we want the power factor, we can take the ratio of them. And engineers for years have learned this as the power triangle as a way of remembering those equations so we can work out the active and reactive and apparent power. 